Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. If you recall from the last tutorial, we got to the point where we have this asset pool, which means we can now load in an individual sprite and display it on the screen. In this tutorial, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a sprite sheet, which will allow us to load multiple sprites from one uh, sprite. So basically just multiple sprites embedded in one sprite. I'm going to show you an example of what this will look like. So what I have here is just a simple sprite sheet. And as you can see, there's multiple different sprites and this is actually the player images. And basically you can just, uh, you'll be able to load this in as one sprite and then you can say sprite.get zero and it'll give you this sprite and then like sprite.get 15 and it should get you whichever sprite is at number 15 in this long line of sprites. So let's code this and see how this actually works. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is go to that assets folder we created and then I have these three pictures, which you can download from the GitHub. There's going to be a link in the description. And then I'm going to create a new folder in here and we'll just call this player. And then this is layer one, layer two, and layer three. And then we'll just move all of those into that player folder. Then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to go into our source and go to component and create a new class. And this will be our sprite sheet class. And then we will add that to GitHub. So this sprite sheet class is going to be taking in, of course, the picture file. So whichever uh, file this sprite sheet is loading from, so we'll say string picture file. And then we will also be taking in the tile width, the tile height, the spacing. And these should be all the values we need to get this working right. And so the tile width and the tile height are pretty self-explanatory. They're how big each individual sprite is. And then the spacing is just the amount of space between each of those sprites. So like two pixels, and it has to be the same on the horizontal and the vertical. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to create some member variables here. And we're actually going to say sprite, sprite. So this will be the sprite attached to this sprite sheet. And then we'll say public, actually, yeah, we'll have the sprite and then we'll keep the tile width and the tile height. And then we will also create a variable for the spacing. Okay, and then we're actually gonna make this a list of sprites. And this will basically be the uh, sprites that are all in contained within the one sprite at this picture file. So then this is gonna ask us to import it. We'll say alt enter import class then we'll go into here and we'll just say uh, this dot tile width, tile height equals tile height. This dot tile width equals tile width. And we'll say this dot spacing equals spacing. Okay. And then what we're going to do next is we're going to actually want to open up the picture at this picture file. So we'll use our asset pool and we will say uh, sprite parent equals and then we'll say asset pool dot get sprite and then we'll pass in that picture file and so this should return us a sprite which will contain all these sprites and it will throw an error or something if it doesn't exist and so before we can start uh, actually creating little sprites we have to modify our sprite class to accept a new sprite that is not coming from a picture file so this will be just if we're passing in the buffered image itself and the width and the height. So we'll say public sprite and create a new constructor. This will take in the width. Well, actually this will just take in the buffered image. And then we'll say this dot buffered image, image equals image. And then this dot width equals image dot get width. And this dot height equals image dot get height. So now we can have sprites that are coming from directly from a buffered image or from a picture file. And this will basically be the sub sprites from a larger sprite, which came from this. So let's go back to sprite sheet. And then we will create a loop in here so that we can count all the different sprites. So before we can start looping through and creating the sub sprites, what we're going to need is a couple more variables up here. So we'll take in the amount of columns that this sprite has. And then we also take in the size, how many sprites are in the sprite sheet, because not all sprite sheets fill up the entire amount of uh, the picture file that they may be contained in. So, We'll go down here and then we'll say int row equals zero. So this is the row that we're starting on. And then int count equals zero. This is how many sprites we've loaded so far. And we'll say while count is less than this dot size. So while we don't have as many, uh, we'll just say size, as many sprites as are in here. 
Um, let's go up here real quick too, and then we'll also say sprites equals a new array list so that that is initialized and then import that with all enter. And then we'll go into here and we will say for int column equals zero until column is less than columns. We'll say column plus plus. So we will loop through column wise on the picture and then we will say int image x, which x are we currently on is the column times the tile width plus the column times the spacing. So this is where's the top left corner of that image in the X position. And so that's just simply uh, how wide is that tile times which column are we on plus how many spaces do we have? So uh, the spaces in between each sprite, which is going to be which column we're on times the spacing. Okay. And then the image Y is going to be row times tile height plus row times spacing. So exactly the same thing, just row wise instead of column wise. Then we will say sprites dot add, and then we will say a new sprite, and we want to get the buffered image for where this column, where this sprite is at. So this just simply parent dot image dot get sub image, and it takes in an x and a y, so image x, image y, and it takes in a width and a height, so tile width and tile height, and that should be good. So that gets us our buffered image and everything. And then that will add it to the sprites. And then we'll say count plus plus. We've just gotten a new sprite. And then we'll say if count is greater than this dot size minus one, not this dot size. If it's greater than size minus one, then we want to break because we have gotten to the point where we are at the next one. And then every time we finish all the columns, we want to increase the row. We are now on a new row. That way the Y will continue to increase as we go through. So this should load up all the sprites that we have and then we should be able to go to sprites and then get an individual sprite using that and so let's check and make sure all this works properly we'll go into our level editor scene and then we have this test object and then we're adding a box bounds we'll take that away okay and then we're going to go into this test object remove this real quick and then we'll say sprite sheet sprite sheet equals a new sprite sheet and let's import that real quick, Alt Enter, and then Control P to list the parameters. So picture file, uh, this is coming from assets slash player slash layer one dot PNG. I'm gonna move to the new line and then tile width. And these are all values I have from when I made this. So just 42 by 42 spacing has two. And then the columns, there are 13 columns and size is just 13 times five. And so that should load it in. And then what we'll say next is we will say test obj dot add component. And then we'll say sprite sheet dot get dot sprites dot get. And then we'll just say zero for now, just to see what happens. So that should draw it wherever this test object is. Let's run this, see what happens. Okay, and we get an error. So what's this saying? Oh, it's saying that this is null because we just deleted this. So we'll just remove this real quick. Okay, run this one more time. There we go. And then if you see this, this is super tiny. And that's because it's just, um, if we look at the image one more time, it's literally just this little cube. So let's go to, this is 13, let's go to like this one. I think that's like 40 something. So I'll say dot get right up here, like 42. Let's see what happens when we do that. And we get this sprite. And then if we say 43, it should be, let's look one more time to make sure that we're getting the right one. So that one was this sprite right here, I think. And so the next one should be this one. And let's do that real quick, run this. And we get the two eyes, sweet. So it's working perfectly. We now have the ability to add a sprite sheet and then tell it what the tile width, the tile height, and the spacings are. And then we can load these in and get a sprite, an individual sprite from this sprite sheet. So this is great. This is going to be the basis for how we're going to load in all the different objects and the different players and everything. And then we will be able to begin using these to build our level. The next tutorial, what we're going to start doing is actually adding a little bit of physics to the game and rotation, rotating the player and everything. And we'll just be drawing the player and trying to get him moving and rotating with the screen. So we'll get to that in the next tutorial. I hope you guys like this. If you did, 
Please hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. See you.